Team Rocket, Team Rocket, Team Rocket, Team Rocket, Team Rocket. Nah, I'm just kidding. Could you guys imagine though? Okay, alrighty, good morning. For those who don't get that bit, there was a streamer, many of you might know, okay? I'm not doing that, he's, he's built different. There was a streamer, Team Rocket YouTube Pokemon. This man said Petrowski, he was attempting to do a challenge run saying Petrowski until he got a shiny Pokemon. So he, I watched his stream for like 30 minutes to an hour. He did it for like 13 hours. Man was unhinged, dedicated, motivated. Don't think he got a shiny, uh, which is crazy. So he'll go for attempt number two, which, uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that. But uh, he's a madman, dude. He's a madman. He sat there saying Petrowski until he got a shiny Wooper. And then he like, he did it for like 13 hours and then like went to work. <laughs> anyways, anyways, good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Stream Recap 121 Safari Week Day 5. I messed up the thing a couple times. Good morning, good morning, guys. How are we doing? I'm sure we'll see some Safari Shinies today. I'm sure we're going to hatch an Egg Shiny, of course. I think today is Hoenn Bonus Day because I think it should go in chronological order. I didn't get a chance to double check. I'm pretty sure it's Hoenn Bonus Day. Even if it's not, not the worst thing in the world. I'm happy to go into Hoenn. I'm looking for shiny apom in here i think shiny apom has like a 20 to 40 percent chance to actually be caught even if you were to find it i think it's like a 20 percent chance or so encounter rate over in the safari zone it's early still we're waking up happy for you guys for joining me what's up what's up it's still pokemon off season things are a little bit quiet and the community is making a lot of its own fun with things like safari week and community events so hopefully we see something something in this upcoming summer hopefully we see either an anniversary event or raids i think it's honestly pretty pretty pivotal to pokemon's health to see something this summer um and i would think that we would but we'll have to see we have all of july thankfully oh i'm dumb there actually there actually is no bonus day today that makes sense so day, so it's there was a bonus day was it day three and then day four and then day five is no bonus day and then day six and day seven that makes a lot of sense honestly so no bonus day today so you kind of just safari shot wherever you want and i obviously want to be in the hoe and i'm going to be going for that apom that mythical pink monkey so i'll be here no bonus day for those who don't know the bonus day is just a it's not like a safari week thing it's a team mister event thing so it's only, it's only really matters for those who are in team mister in the event so apologize for, apologize for talking about it so much i know it doesn't really apply to a lot of you guys but it matters for me and in terms of like what i want to shunt and where i'm at and what i'm looking for so that could factor in is poker force coming soon from my understanding they're aiming for a late 2024 release um i am dude i'm not gonna lie i'm more excited for for you know poker force than ever um i'm really i'm really hoping it could shake things up add a big competitor to pokemon it could be a really, really big deal i say this every day but i just i'm really excited for the game I, ho I hope they do a really good job like i was telling my friend about pokemon we don't even want deadlines we don't want dates we want updates we want info we want any kind of communication at all yeah um once again like as the as the as, as i like to think of myself as like the positive force in, in pokemon right um if we don't get an update this summer like it's a pretty big it's a really really big loss of momentum for pokemon it'd be a really really big deal it'd be really really sad um pokemon's grown more than ever over the past two two to three years it's the largest it's ever been not at this exact moment you know it's off season to look wider right now it makes sense um but pokemon is like in, in, at its whole bigger than it's ever been like it's it's off season size is like how big it was um during like peak seasons like two years ago which is crazy um and i, I feel like the amount of updates and the quality of updates have respected that and have like gone hand in hand for the most part um, with things like the giant PC and GTL UI overhaul being like small updates for the year. Those were giant. Those were massive updates that I think a large player base really, really appreciated. Um, obviously, Johto dropping, all that stuff. But I feel like we, we you have to kind of keep it up and it sucks. But like, hope I hope I hope we I, we got to see something this summer. The, the, the real like TLDR is like, I feel like something this summer is pretty crucial for the game's health. But I, I don't want to like, I'm not want to like, once again, worry about something before it's even happened. Like, I don't need to like start worrying about like, the game's health if we don't get an update this summer when the summer's not even over yet like i don't know it's, it's, it's i guess it's worth talking about um and i think it's the devs have kind of given us that reason to worry in the past by by not dropping things at really important times so we'll see i'm hoping for the best i hope we see something I, I i swear i feel like we've got to see something like raids i think the devs know how big of a fumble it would be if they didn't put something out this summer if we don't see anything until halloween that would be really really brutal um like really bad <laughs> Um, I think we'll see either raids or anniversary event this summer, hopefully. 
I feel like the game should have an event every three months-ish. Instead of three events in three months, it creates burnout and not even people want to play the game. It just dies. I kind of, I mean, I definitely agree. The problem is like, how do we do that? Um, you're not wrong. That might be like one of the most, yeah. If you want to like really improve Pokemon overall, we kind of do need to rehaul event season and kind of take it from three events within three months or like, you know, many, many events in a very short period too. I, I like that a lot, like spreading them out a little bit more. Or like we talked about having event season, but then having like other big things going on outside of event season that are spread apart. Things like a uh, big summer update every year, like the anniversary events, things like Pokemon leagues. Um, I, I think we do need, as someone who preaches how much late game and end game content there is, you still want stuff on the horizon to be excited for. And I think the general player base really, 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 really needs that. And I think people want something to look forward to, even if it's like, I think it's really important. I think that's why like communication goes a long way with the devs. And I'd love to see more communication. There's a lot of things we could talk about here. A lot, a lot of like repeating the same talking points that I've, I've talked about for many, many years. So I'm sure you guys understand. If you have any questions, let me know. We need achievements and quests. Achievements and quests would be really cool. Or some sort of like quest log or achievement list or something like that. What would be so cool about that is like, if they get a system like that in place, they can permanently add to it for the rest of time. That's what's so cool, right? Um, like, let's say like each month, they can just put out like a new achievement or a new quest and, and constantly permanently give us new content. Um, and if, if, even if something little, like I really do feel like the Pokemon players want a little something new trickled like every month. That's like an actual in-game mechanic. That isn't just like a PVP change or a forum post or like, Something like that, right? I feel like the community does do push a lot of the changes in the game. What are your thoughts on hidden ability drill burst slash excadrill prices? So yeah, for those who don't know, they probably cost like what, 800, six to 800 K. Um, so, and it's a really good PVP mon. It's tough because the reason why it's so expensive is drill burst, hidden ability drill burst gets mold breaker, which is a really good hidden ability and allows it to like set up stealth rocks through magic bounce espion, which is really sick and really powerful. Don't to push through uh, magic bounce um the problem is it was an event only pokemon and they were like these hidden ability mods were only released during the um was it a lunar, lunar new year event one, one of the events um my eggs hatched so like it, it's tough you want competitive pokemon to be like in a decent price range to where it's accessible to everybody but at the same time i think it's good to even have a few pvp mons that are kind of expensive and are kind of super sought after and a little harder to get things like zapdos things like um hidden ability superior was one for a long time hidden ability superior, superior has got a lot cheaper now over time though um things like excadrill for example that you know whatever i think it's good for some of them to be expensive because it helps the economy and also drives these like sought after PvP mons that are kind of viewed as a very, very cool little piece in a team that not everybody has access to. Generally, you do want everybody to have access to as many good PvP mons as possible, which is why the breeding system is so good, because it allows people to be on the same competitive playing field, which is why I love the breeding system in Pokemon, because it allows people to get, like, 31 timid uh, speed, like, Starmies, for example. Whereas, like, back in the day, if you, like, couldn't breed for IVs and you had to, like, wild catch a 31 speed timid Starmie, let alone with all the other stats, like, whoever got lucky and had one of those or, like, fished long enough to go to, like, it was just so much better. You outsped other Starmies and that was a big deal. Um, I feel like it's good for certain comps to be expensive like that and be chase competitive mons and kind of drive that market and drive that economy. Um, but not that many, like, you shouldn't have, like, that many mons do that. So I think, like, having two or three right now with, like, Zapdos and, um... Maybe Shaman, uh, but that's not like UU. You, you. But like ha having Zapdos be pretty expensive and having Hidden Ability Estrogel be expensive is fine. Now I wouldn't want it to be like super expensive long term. Generally, um, over time, um, what's it called? If I just give one Prismatic Pearl, we'll give it ability. The problem with Prismatic Pearl is your you, Prismatic Pearl sucks Hidden Ability Access off of one Pokemon and spits it onto another, right? So you need a Hidden Ability Access Drill Burr anyway, and then you like suck that off and put it onto like a competitive Excadrill, for example. Um, it's gonna cost like what 800k minimum or whatever um so it wouldn't be it wouldn't actually be cheaper you better just buy a drill burn breed it up if that makes sense is pvp doubles played more than one-on-one -on -one? you can just check pvp statistics if you're like in game and go to pvp statistics you can actually see which i love uh we can see how many games have been played so so far in total it seems like 26,000. this is for the over the past 26 days 26,000 doubles games have been played uh seven 105,000 OU games have been played. 15,000 UU, what a drop. 
and then 37,000 Enyu. Enyu's been picking up quite a bit, which is really cool. Uh, I think, I, I wonder if it's Blaziken re-entering the tier and kind of, I, I talked about how Blaziken was a problem for a long time, and then as soon as it left, even I was like, oh no, what did we do? Um, the problem is Hitmontop and like other things become, stall becomes way too good without Blaziken, but then Blaziken also like centralizes the metagame. It's so weird. Um, Blaziken is almost a needed evil necessity for Enyu right now, where it stops stall. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, there's no other good, like, firefighting types. Like, it, it's, like, it, without, without Blaziken, like, nothing is strong enough to, like, crash through stall. Um, it's so awkward. It's very awkward, but I do think, yeah, Blaziken's a necessity. And it's honestly not like that. I don't know. It's oppressive to where it's, like, it's, like, centralizing, but not oppressive, maybe. Like, everybody needs to run a Blaziken, pretty much. But, um, I feel like it doesn't feel that bad to play against Blaziken, right? You know what I just realized? So this is the number of total matches played. I get it. This is this is the number of like matches that Mon was in, right? Does that make sense? Is that the is that the math, right? So like if both teams have a scissor, it counts as two within one match. Oh, I get it. Okay, so I actually should be checking the bottom statistic. I've been doing that for a long time. Wow, that's so interesting. That really, wow, that really speaks volumes to how many people like have a scissor in both matches or some shit like that. That's crazy. So 705,000, like, well, I, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how, the, I don't understand these stats. I guess 705,000 total games with Scizor have been played? No, I, feel, I don't understand. I don't, actually don't get it. Am I dumb? 352k versus 705. It's a round half. I think that makes somewhat sense. I'm like on the right track. I don't get math, dude. I'm too dumb. Okay, dudes, this is Hokey. He got himself, Pokemon streamer got himself a shiny Lapras. What do we think happened? Did he catch it, boys? What do we think? Look how high quality his camera is. What the hell? Okay, first ball. Stay. Okay, it stayed. It stayed. Dude, the sheer emotion Guys. going through this man's brain. Just the insta the break ball. twice is crazy. Okay, it stayed. Dude, he was brave for like correct. He like stood up in his chair. I would have fell over if it fled. Get what is happening? Ball. Three insta break is crazy. It stayed. This poor guy's heart, man. Yes. No. What? He got so few shakes. No. <gasps> it left. Oh my god, the shakes. Me. Oh my god. This is so real. The ten this oh, the ten no. seconds of this is so real. Holy shit. <laughs> this poor guy. Oh dude, the lack of shakes, the lack of God yeah, 406 encounters. Jesus, dude. Rest in peace, man. You hate to see it. All right, I've been saying for a long time that mathematically shiny charms are not worth it, but someone in chat is questioning it. So let's just run over the math. I've done this math a million times, but you always got to, uh, it's good to go over it again to just show people how inefficient charms are. Charms are, are pissing away Pokeyen for for the chance out of more shinies, right? Um, and I, as this is for someone who uses charms. Charms are, are a for fun sort of thing. You do, you know that you're pissing away Pokeyen, but it's for fun, right? Okay. So let's say you buy dinner status. How much is a 30 day right now? We're going to calculate for a time swipe horde hunt and a single encounter hunt. So a dinner status is 3.4 mil. Okay, we got we got that. That's step number one, right? <clears throat> Let's say you're doing a times three, a times five horde hunt, right? So with shiny charms and dinner status, you're gonna have to do this for you have to hunt for 24 hours on average, right? So that means you're gonna need 24 shiny charms, by the way. Um, so that's 24 times what is shiny? 250k a piece. Now, donor status is pretty... I have videos on the... If you Google, is donor status worth it? And is Shiny Charm worth it? I have videos on these topics, if you're interested, um, that go over this math. 24 times 240k, right? So, you go from... I just make 5 million Poke in, right? Plus the 3.4, right? So, in a times 5 horde hunt, you are spending 9.1 million Poke in, almost 9.2, Right? to take the shiny rate from one out of 30K to one out of 24K. Now, what does that mean in actual hours? Oh, it means six hours. That's it. That's all the time you save. A thousand encounters per hour, 1,200 if you're using Lepas. If you're using Lepas, it's costing more money. 
you know, this divided by six. Okay, so if you're able to make 1.6 million Poke Yen per hour doing some sort of money making method, then sure. Oh, my calculator. This is such a giant number, it's even off my calculator. Um, Jesus. If you're able to make this amount of money per hour, then it could be financially worth it. How many people are doing this? How many people are making 1.6 million an hour, right? Not many, right? Some people maybe with flipping and whatever, right? Not many people. Um, Johnny Charms are disgustingly not worth it. It's, it's ridiculous. The, the Poke Yen for the, for the time save is ridiculous. Let's do single encounters, right? So similar situation. You start at 3.4 mil for, for donator status. We'll add, that, add it, we'll add that at the end. A single encounter shunt takes 100 hours on average. If you're doing 300 encounters per hour, most people aren't usually like 280 or 250, something like that, right? Um, so let's do shiny charms the entire time, right? Let's do three. Let's do optimal numbers. 100 hours. What's the math? Oh man, I'm so bad at math. Um, 30,000 minus 6k encounters, 100 hours. Well, I'm one sec, chat. I'm trying to do some math. I'm getting distracted. I'm easily distracted. So if you save 6,000 encounters, 6,000 divided by 300, 20, is it 20? 20 hours? Is that the math? Yeah. So you save 20 hours by paying. Then you would do, the math you would do is 24 times, ooh, no. Oh, I'm getting distracted. Um... Okay, I'm dumb. So just 20 hours saved on a 100-hour hunt, so it becomes 80 hours, okay? So you do 80 hours times the 240k, right? Per shiny charm, per hour. 19 mil, right? Plus the 3.4, right? In total. So now it becomes... So you're, so you're paying 22 million Poke Yen to save 20 hours. So once again, even on a single encounter hunt, you have to be making 1.1 million Poke Yen per hour through some other money-making method for it to be worth using Shiny Charms. Shiny Charm... People come in and, and cry about, like, endgame players using Shiny Charms and how, like, oh, we're so... Oh, it's not fair. Like, I don't have the money to use Shiny Charms. They're literally not worth it. Like, Shiny Charms are not good. They are not worth it. Um, anyone using them at endgame is doing so because they, like, are just having fun and, like, being dumb, right? They're literally not worth it. Um... Shiny Charms are, are pissing away like years of, of grinding and, 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 of, and investing and in all these things. They're like literally not worth it. It's kind of like going out to like have drinks with the boys. Like it's just, I don't know, it's for fun. Um, it's not worth it financially, right? Um, so yeah, I see so many people like, oh, I'm shunting without donor status, without charm. Like you should be most of the time. Um, donor status is fine. To, donor status is actually quite good if you shunt like a decent amount. Um, Shiny Charm is so not worth it. So don't like... Don't worry about being not having charms. Charms are not not worth it financially. Yeah, with egg, to be fair, with egg hunting, egg hunting might be the only scenario where shiny charms are worth it. And even that is like under scrutiny and kind of under um, debate or whatever, right? Um, that's that's more complicated. Um, but that might be the only time where it's worth this if you're egg hunting. Don't ever pop, especially if you're a new player. I see so many new players like popping shiny charms during times five horde hunting, and it's like it's not worth it. You're just pissing away all of your like like don't build capital and then spend it all on on dumb stuff like this. Go um go make investments, go make more pokey and read for profit, flip, etc. But people look down on buying shinies from the GTL. I will I will be super honest with you, dude. Um, they absolutely do. Um, if you buy shinies off the GTL, people will absolutely look down upon you for the which I think is a little harsh. Um. It's a it's a tough line to draw because bought shinies are inherently less valuable than um than caught OT shinies because um on average it takes more time and effort to get an OT shiny versus a versus a bought one which usually we judge value uh, humans usually judge value of most things by like time and energy and effort put into things and also there's other things like an, like uh, meaningfulness or whatever there's other factors but like generally you have, have to draw really general boundaries obviously there's spe specifics and caveats but like let's let's draw general boundaries um Generally, like, values decided upon, like, how difficult something is to obtain, how long it took, how much effort was put in, yada, 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 right? Um, I have a video called the Dratini Equation that really breaks this down. Um, but essentially, now Dratini has changed a little bit. Now it's like a 100, it used to be a 500 hour hunt. Now it's like a 150 hour hunt, but the point still stays the same. Where, like, um, you could go buy a shiny Dratini, right? Uh, let's go check. Shiny Dratini. Now you could go buy a shiny Dratini. Uh, for 6 mil. To be fair, they've actually gone up in price, which is kind of funny. But let's see if there's other cheaper Dragonairs. Dragonair. There you go. You can go buy a Dragonair 
for 3.5, like 4 mil, right? Let's take, out, let's take out a 4 mil. You can go buy a shiny dragon for 4 mil. And anybody in newer to intermediate players can make like 300,000 Pokemon per hour pretty consistently doing gym runs and other things. I did the wrong number. Um, 4 mil divided by 300k, right? You can do that pretty easily. That's 13 hours. That's 13 hours to get a sh to buy a shiny dragon air versus it's currently with times five hordes it is a 150 hour hunt right so it's kind of like a like i think i think non-ot shiny collecting is valid and is cool but what really grinds my gears is if if someone in global chat is like hey i just caught this shiny dratini like look look guys like pod 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 and then someone else goes oh my god yeah i have a shiny dratini too and they like a non-ot one that is not the same it is not it is so unbelievably it's it's kind of like i always compare it to like in like in the real world the real world's less fair and people don't really care about this as much but in pokemon we literally have systems in place to designate this with the ot system but like i always say like in real life if a 40 year old flexes his lamborghini that he's worked his whole fucking life for and he can finally afford and then some 16 year old is like yeah look at me i have one too my dad gave it to me for my birthday like that feels really shitty right like he worked way less hard and in real life that's unfair and whatever but like there's nothing you can really do who cares right you move on um and if, in pokemon we literally have a system in place that like judges fairness based on based on this i, I think it's kind of interesting um that basically sums up the ot system and why people look down on others for buying OT shinies. I think it gets a little harsh. I think non-OT collecting can be a cool thing, especially for players who don't have as much time. I think it should be encouraged. I really like that people non-OT collect, but I think once you start comparing non-OT shinies to OTs, you have a huge problem. But yeah, apparently there's a shiny Carnivine, uh, shiny Carnivine Channel 4 Marshland. I'm coming as soon as possible, if they don't mind waiting. I'm gonna get kicked out, ding dong, on the way, fellas. All right, we got this, boys. Okay. Carnivine should actually be like a pretty high catch rate, I think, right? So if you actually have a shine, it's like one of the rarer shinies. What? Where is he at? Which location? I don't know this, this zone at all. Wrong safari? Oh, he's in Johto Safari. Oh, I'm so dumb. My bad. Okay, right, Marshland Johto. Let's check it out, fellas. Channel 4. I'm on Channel 4. Perfect. Dude, Carnivine is a super rare shine. It's, what, it's one we need for Team Mister. I, I don't think this guy is Team Mister. Wait, is... No, no, no. It's not Tints, is it? No, no, no. Where's he at? Where's he at? I can't. Am I blind? Black Fox C. Why can't I... Oh, is he over here? Oh, okay. He's, he's, he's down on top of... Okay. Carnivine. You know, cringe Pokemon. It's shiny? In Pokemon? That looks pretty good, man. I'm shocked. The autumn colors, the like red to orange legs. This is kind of a sick shiny. Good luck, dude. Good luck, man. Good luck, man. I think it, uh, I'm pretty sure it's like a 60% catch rate. I actually think it's high. I actually think it's a good catch rate. Come on. The rare, it's a rare shiny. Please, I don't know what's flea rate though. Okay. This is like a rare, like 5% shiny in Safari Zone. It's like one of the this is one of the few we need for Team Mister. Good luck to you. Come on. Come on. No! I I I really thought. Fuck! I'm so sorry, dude. I really thought you Damn, dude! Dude, greedy? What about it was greedy? Oh. I'm devastated. I really thought he had that. That's I'm sorry if I jinxed it. Fuck, man. It's so fucked. I'm so sorry, Ant. I'm so sorry, man. That's that's just. Damn, dude. Zero out of three on fifty percent catch rate shinies. You're shitting me. That's some fucking. What luck, man. I've lost Shuckle, Coughing, and Carnivine. I'm so sorry, man. Or Ant. All at the same spot. This band has had three shinies, all at the marshland. 50% catch rates on all of them. And, and lost. Jesus, man.
I'm really sorry. That's like, I'm actually like, that's so devastating. That might be the, damn, that shiny hurt me more. Like, damn, the Chansey sucks, but like you kind of expected to flee. That shiny hurt me more than any shiny I think this week so far. And it wasn't even a team Mr. Shiny. That's fucked, man. Justice for Ant. I, I wish you the best of luck and, and your redemption arc, man. Good luck. We keep going. The far, Safari Zone's unforgiving. Damn, dude. Just That's just not fair. That sucks, man. Damn. By the way, we hashed all the eggs. It wasn't in the eggs, fellas. Kind of bummed. I don't know why. I just... I, sh I shouldn't be. I only did four boxes. I guess I did like six boxes in total this Safari week. It's obviously like not many encounters, but I just... I don't know. I have done a lot of eggs and i've never i just i really want to get an egg shiny one day you know i don't even know if i deserve it yet you know i'll, I'll keep going i'll keep doing more but just a little bummed you know i think it's fair um i would love to see an egg shiny I, i've done a lot of egging on my account i've done a lot of different rare shunts and i feel like for whatever reason i always am able to just barely avoid rare shunts and i always get my times five horde luck immaculate my uh my uh, however my singles my eggs etc is uh not so shiny Hey, Pat, I do have some of my buds into Pokemon recently. What would be a good way of keeping them interested? I'm going to be honest, man. That is the golden question. Pokemon gets a ton of new players, right? When you think about it, you know, it's a Pokemon fan-made game. You can play, It's a multiplayer Pokemon game. You can play with your friends. That's all you need to get them hooked, right? But keeping players and player retention is one of the most difficult things that Pokemon has a, t has a, has a problem with. It's, it's, their, it's probably the biggest problem in Pokemon. Um, we get so many new players and so many of them do a couple storylines or even do all the storylines and then quit. They don't know what to do. They don't set goals. They don't, they don't, they don't know where to go from there. Um, there's no way in game that directly guides them of where to go. Um, if you want your friends to stick around, I think challenging them to certain grinds, challenge it, making competitions with them, setting goals with them is, is needed. It's important. Joining a team is really important for player retention. Um, watching my, I have a video called top 10 post game goals for top five post game goals for Pokemon, top 10 end game goals, and then 63 things to do in Pokemon. Um, these are all like really important videos that I really hope help player retention, especially right now. Like we haven't had an update to the game in four months or so, which is honestly not bad at all for like any traditional, any like player that's been playing for a long time that's not that bad but for a lot of new players that's a long time and they're not really used to that and it's it's a quieter period in pokemon hopefully that that changes here very very soon coming up in the summertime help coming up in in this june or july hopefully we see something big um but yeah player retention is tough keeping players around is tough for pokemon setting goals and setting your own goals is the most important thing once again once once the storylines are over you're sort of you're it's like bowling right once um the storyline's over your bumper rails are off and like now you have to like set your own goals or it's kind of like uh in minecraft i always do the minecraft analogy where it's like so many people play minecraft beat the ender dragon and then quit and that's like very and that's there's nothing wrong with that as well so maybe your friends that's just like how they play games is what they enjoy it, don't force your friends to stick around if they don't enjoy it. i think that's really important um not that you're gonna do that but like um helping them like you can play minecraft forever minecraft is a sandbox game try, try to encourage your friends to think of pokemon as a sandbox game and as a game with a bunch of great systems but you need to come up with your own goals like in minecraft you have to think of things to build you have to think of number goals to to put into place think of things you want to create like if you don't have these giant massive goals in minecraft you're gonna get bored you're gonna quit it just happens same thing with pokemon has there ever been a bike race in pokemon like a lap of a region or something similar there has uh, would be a cool competition having competitions like that dude there is oh uh, i'd love you there's so much room for sick and unique and cool competitions in pokemon and it's why it frustrates me when people say there's like nothing to do or like you do have to kind of create your own fun i get it it's a sandbox right but there's so much to do that is legit cool like hosting a a bike race in pokemon sounds amazing that'd be so fun dude the fun that people can create in this game is way more pure than fun in other games. It feels special. This is how MMOs have always been. I feel like a lot of Pokemon fans come to Pokemon MMO and maybe don't know about MMOs or haven't played MMOs historically, which is fair. Most people don't, right? But like MMOs are about making your own fun and making your own way and having those like really, really memorable moments, right? Um, I think it's really, really important. It's kind of like a lost art in games. Shiny Shuckle Safari Hoenn Channel 1. You're trolling. Please tell me that's real. Dude.
No way. It has been so long since I've seen a shiny shuckle at this spot live. I mean, obviously, the last one I saw live was mine. That's... Good luck to you, man. Good luck to you, dude. There, it's a, it's a decent-ish. What's the catch rate? Is it a 50% chance to catch? It's I think it's a 33% chance to flee after each turn. Uh, it took me four balls, which I, I still have... I think that shuckle was either the only shuckle, like one of two shuckles that I've ever seen stay that long. He's getting it. He's going to catch it. He's going to catch it. Yeah, 33% chance to flee is... Good luck, dude. Is this Team Pori? This is Rabby. I know Rabby Black. Good luck to you, dude. I see them in chat sometimes. The whole stream is behind you, man. Good luck, good luck, dude. First ball. Okay, it's, it stays, it stays, it stays. Okay, it stays, it stays. We knew it, we knew it. This one's gonna be tougher. Chat, just just put your energy into him. Come on. Yes! Oh, I almost broke my chair. Um, <laughs> Wait, did I break my chair? No, it's fine. Okay. Yes, dude. Let's go. Congrats. Congrats, Rabbi. Oh, it's like, oh man, that was a, like a reliving. Oh, dude. Good catch, man. Congratulations. A shiny shuckle on day five, man. You love to fucking see it. Congrats, dude. Congrats, 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 Rabby. Congratulations, man. Join the shuckle gang. Congratulations, dude. This is, this is so real. Uh, someone said, like, I love how supportive everybody is. I feel like I always talk about how the high shiny rate in Pokemon is a good thing. And I feel like this is a big example. Where, like, since the shiny rate is so high, and anyone who's ever hunted for a shiny knows how hard it is to get one, the emotions are that much higher. Like, the empathy is that much higher, right? The, the ceiling, in terms of, like, emotions, is so much higher in Pokemon because of the rarity. Um, like... People probably get more excited for others to catch a shiny in Pokemo than people get excited to catch their own shinies in like Sword and Shield, right? Like I actually, I actually feel like there's more excitement and because the, the emotions are so much higher that the empathy is literally stronger in Pokemo than like your own feeling in traditional Pokemon because the shiny that's like what that shiny rate does. Um, now it's not for everybody. Obviously, not everybody wants to put that amount of time into things. I get it. I, there's no. I'm not trying. To, I'm not saying it's like the perfect system for everybody, but it's the perfect system for, I don't know, psychos like me who want that that high emotionality and want that really intense intensity and want that difficulty and want that grind and want that story. Um, Pokemon is a fantastic game to make stories, man. Congratulations to Rabbi once again. Okay, yo, it's Rabbi Black in chat. Hey, thanks guys for the love. Got a pine code the other day too. That's crazy that you also got a pine. You caught it too? Pine goes like not an easy catch. I'm pretty sure, right? That's like an egg hunt rare to get in the safari zone. That's like super good to get. That's insane. Two safari shinies in a week is, yeah, it's wild. Dude, congratulations, man. That's so sick. I hope that like, okay. I feel like my stream is going to end up being the grounding thing the community needs because we see all of these people get like hyper rare shinies, secret shiny safari shinies, like all these. You almost get desensitized to it and then you shiny hunt in the safari zone for a week and are like, what the heck? Like everybody's so lucky. Where's my shinies? But it, the reality is there's like for every one person who gets that super rare thing, there's tens of thousands of other people who are shunting in the safari zone who are like not getting anything all week like my you know like i might end up right like that's that's the reality of it um so it is good to like ground ourselves and keep that in mind like because it's easy to get desensitized and think that these rare things happen all the time but it's only because so many people are hunting you know dude magma chod i swear this guy is some viewer of mine he always appears on stream he like always he's always i see him so much in game it's crazy he's not in a team he just has like six shinies and stuff. He just like hangs out in the corner on my streams. And then usually if I call him out, he like he like logs out. He like disappears. He's like a he's like a fucking ghost, bro. He just pops up. Am I see is he actually there? Is he a real player? Or am I seeing things? Dude, if Spidget the PvP Giga Chad goes shiny hunting with me in the Safari Zone, I'd be so happy, man. I feel like me and him, I feel like we trade RNG. I'm a dog shit PvPer who doesn't PvP, who has amazing luck in PvP. And I feel like Spidget is going to go shiny hunt and immediately get a shiny. He's like PvP Giga Chad with like piss bad luck. But I feel like, I feel like he'll go 
Safari Zone and like immediately get a shiny within like 2k encounters would be my guess. Um, I, I believe it, dude. I swore an oath to my chat that I'd never shiny hunt. Dude, come on, man. I believe in you. I believe you can do it. I believe in you. Give Gengar Levitate and add Fairy. Gengar has had Levitate, I think, twice in Pokemo, and both times it was so ridiculously broken in PvP. I think they hot fixed it, like both times. Um, it, dude, Levitate Gengar has historically been really busted in Pokemo PvP. Um, also with Fairy type, like Fairy type was added to nerf dragons, right? And dragons are strong in Pokemo, but the problem is we've already nerfed dragons manually to make it so we don't really need the fairy. Now, now I think one day it'd be maybe good if the community wants it, it'd be good to get it. It's a lot more complicated, right? Um, like Garchomp not having access to Swords Dance, High Dragon, no Draco Meteor. You guys know this. Very typical Pokemo stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, Shiny Haunter in Johto? Oh, let's go, boys. Stop the movie. Stop the bad movie takes. Let's head over to uh, the Shiny. Okay, we have a Shiny Haunter here, it seems like, from... Dude. Dude. Great shot. Underrated Shiny. I really like... I, Haunter is my favorite, actually, in the line of Ghastly Haunter. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Is he just gonna catch it? Oh, okay. I'm busy. He's just gonna catch it. I'm... I was busy talking. Uh, he's just... He's just built different. He's just... Who cares? What the hell? He just... He's not even, he doesn't, he doesn't need an intro. He had plenty of buildup. He just, he just catches it. He's just that good. Um, I was going to stall for content, but that guy, he's just too good. Dude, fuck. Dude, congratulations, man. Holy shit. Shiny Haunter achieved. Safari Zone. Easy peasy, boys. This is a great question. How do I disable the flash upon entering a battle? It bothers a lot of people's like eyes and stuff. There is a setting. Let me try to find it. It is somewhere. What do is it interface? It's called like pre-battle flash. Do, do it wouldn't be sound gameplay pre battle flash why is it i want a gameplay not like video pre battle flash uh you can go here and, and put that on or off um anything else i turn this on follower bounce oh yeah i gotta see them bounce why not um everything else is just kind of like personal preference we're talking about video games and the, the quote unquote death of video games and gamers perception of games. And I would talk about how like, I feel like pretty much any game that isn't at its peak, people just call like, oh, it's dead game LMAO. Like things like PUBG, things like Overwatch. Like these games are not at their peak and morale in the communities is pretty low, um, but they're not dead by any means. Their, their numbers and their statistics are pretty good, honestly, in comparison to a lot of other video games. Um, Pokemo is a really, really, really rare exception. Now, is Pokemon at its peak right now at this current month? Definitely not. But it was at its peak like four months ago, which I think is pretty amazing. You can't stay at your peak forever. Um, it is so rare. I always talk about like Pokemon really had a resurgence. So starting in like 2021, um, man, Pokemon had a massive resurgence. And you don't see that very often. The game had been out for at that point, what, eight years? And all of a sudden starts growing again? You don't, that's really, really, really abnormal. Um, I can only think of like three games that have hit their peak players. They're like all time peak players after being out for over 10 years, actually four games. Old School RuneScape, TF2, dead at semi recently, which is crazy. Um, and Minecraft and then Pokemon. These are like the only four games that I know of that have been out for 10 years and then hit a new peak of, of, of players and like are consistently growing. Um, that is really, 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 really rare, uh, to like drop players and then like be able to come back like that. It's so, for a game to be out for 10 years, it's so ridiculously rare and Pokemon is lucky enough to be like up there with, with some of the best, in my opinion. Pat open chat. What happened? It has to be an egg. Scrolling up, scrolling up one rare a day. It's a tie rogue. <laughs> what? A Tyrogue? Oh my, okay, for those who don't know, oh my god. Wait, what, hatched six hours ago? What? Did he not, did he AFK? Did he do a Nick Shark thing where he AFK'd? What? Okay, Tyrogue is like top three? Top five rare shinies in Pokemon Mo. Um, because, number one, you can't really wild encounter. I guess you can lure, you can lure it, and it's like very rare in like victory roads. You, you like, it's so hard to accidentally. A big thing of rarity is like how can you, how many people accidentally run into that shiny just during like the storylines. Doesn't really happen with um with Hitmon with all the Hitmon lines, right? And then secondly, 
to breed Tyrogue every time it's a baby pokemon so it has that problem of like every time you want to breed you breed like 400 tyrogues then you have to level all of them up to level 20 and evolve them into hitmonlee hitmonchan you also you can't even use berries it's not a happy it's actually worse than happiness you can't even um use happiness berries to raise them like level them to like level two and then evolve them no 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 you have to level all of them level 20 which is actually harder than happiness um and then you evolve them all, and then you have to breed them all down. And each, every time you breed like 400 Tyrogues, you have to evolve them all up every 400 of them every time. It is, Tyrogue is a pain in the butt. It is an insane shunt. That is so wild, dude. That is so wild. The edge rares have been insane in Team Mister. Yo, I got two shinies yesterday a Safari Oddish and a Times 5 Horde Weasling. Life is good. What the young cabbage? Dude, you're blowing me out, bro. Nice fucking shinies, man. Happy to hear it, dude. Okay, apparently we have a shiny, boys. Rocky Beach, no strats. Is it a Lapras? Is it a Poliwhirl? We don't know yet. Let's go check it. I'm coming as fast as possible. Okay, apparently he already threw one ball, so we're a little late, fellas. Is it channel one? I want to make sure it's channel one before I switch. I assume it's channel one. But if I if I have to, um, channel one? I don't know. if it, Is it a Lapras? I don't know what it is yet. Uh, do do do. No strats. Where's he at? Is he over here? On this pile. Top right. No strategy. Okay. Dude. What happened? What? Uh, did it flee? Le oh, I didn't. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, what was it? I don't even know what it was. Was it a Lapras? We didn't, we didn't get to see. Holly? Oh, man. No, it's okay. It's not. No, I, dude, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. I'm horrible at waiting for when, when I'm when I, when I get a shiny. I never want to wait. I want to just like get the encounter over with. Um, Poliwag, man. I'm sorry. No strats. Damn. That's that's brutal. A Poliwag ran. Damn, dude. Is that the first shiny we've seen today in Team Mister as well? We can end the Gamba. Didn't didn't get caught. It's red ran. Ah, damn, dude. Sorry, we've seen a couple rough fleas today, dude. Also, the polywag was secret? No way. Oh, dude. It was secret? I'm hearing it was secret shiny. I hope he recorded the... I hope he recorded it. Damn. That's... Damn. I'm getting tuckered out, fellas. You know what that means. That means it is time to have another Baja Blast and pop a shiny charm and go do eggs. Let's go set up, fellas. Damn, Alpha Quillfish is actually kind of a cool Chalpha hunt. Water bee males, how much are those? Um, I was thinking like, I, I, we need a Quillfish for um for Team Mister. I, we might as well get a Chalpha. <laughs> you know, you might as well. Yeah, fishing fishing shunts suck. So uh, you might as well go for a Chalpha, right chat? Let's do five at least, maybe 10, maybe? Let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five. We'll get the cool fish females they're pretty cheap thankfully one two three four five six seven eight nine ten the money is depleting boys all right we got it fellas here is the setup we got one box two box three box four box four and some change what is that 60 or sorry 30 eggs per so it's 30 60 120 130, 132, 132 Pokemon. I'm going to pop a charm. I'm gonna egg that really quick, and then we're gonna rush back over to the Safari Zone. Let's see what happens. Team Mister is getting is getting some insane rare luck recently. I've still never had an egg shiny. Um, could it could today be the day? I'm pumping through charms as well. Good luck, guys. Good luck to everyone on charm. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, what is a utility Pokemon people aren't using enough? Probably one that I don't use enough is Damp Parasect. Um. I have like a damp quagsire in the back and a lot of old heads like myself haven't switched over to um damp parasect yet who's just, who's just a like um you know who's just a better damp pokemon to have because it can also be a catching pokemon so that's probably the one that i can think of the one that i need to adjust to as well is damp parasect as a catching pokemon and a damon Alrighty, this is the last breed I'll be doing that I'll be consolidating all of my eggs. Let's just, let's just sprint over to the Safari Zone now. We'll consolidate eggs at the PC there. Alright, here's all of our eggs. We've got 
60, 120, 130, ended up with a little extra, uh, 134. We'll add that onto our calculator in a quick sec. Let's just go Safari Shunt right now, though. Yeah, 35,000 encounters on the main should be coming up here pretty soon, and then 8,000 on the alt. We're currently at 34,800 on the main, and then 7,955 on the alt. Here's the last encounter on this charm. No shiny on the charm, fellas, but that's okay. We're going to keep going. We got five eggs hatched in passive as well. We're just, we're just continuing some shunting. Is Drain Punch better than Brick Break? Yes, pretty much always. Unless you like need Brick Break for some specific, obviously like in PvP, Brick Break on weaker mods. I've ran Brick Break on like Eevee Light War Turtle, for example, in NU, kind of a niche situation. But that to like break screen setting teams can be legit relevant. Um, but like if you're like playing PvM, raids, etc., Drain Punch is pretty much always better. Wait, this is the most PvP player thing I've ever heard. Fidget can't come shiny hunt with us because he doesn't have the Elite Four done in Hoenn. So he can't access this area. <laughs> he can't access this area of the Safari Zone. That's <laughs> need the storyline done. That's so funny. Oh, Friday fellows. Yep, already Friday fell. Yep, exactly. Uh, the brain's fried. The shuckles will be checked. And that's what we're going to call it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. It was a super long stream, like eight-hour stream today. A lot of fun. Talked to talk to the boy Spidget. Uh, Shiny hunted. Talked about the future of Pokemo. Updates. You know, Gen 6. Raids. Typical stuff. Average stuff. And uh, saw some crazy shinies, honestly, today. With the secret shiny Poliwag. Um, the car that was Carnivine today. It's like it's like literally been so long. It's like hard to remember. Um, both lost. We call it, we saw some caught shinies, right? I think at some point. Anyways, um, yeah, short stream, only eight hours, very minimal. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Like it if you enjoyed it, guys. Like the stream on on YouTube. Dislike if you didn't. Subscribe for videos every single day. Streams are Monday through Friday, usually at twelve p.m. ET. Discord's down below. And if you want to go above and beyond and support the content, if these long streams have been enjoyable in your car rides home from work to work at work background podcast style content make sure to youtube membership twitch prime twitch sub and paypal select minimal donations they really do allow me to do this thanks for watching guys i'll see you later peace arena hey thank you so very much for watching until the very end of the video that means the world to me and everyone on this list means even more to me for helping support the channel every single day thanks so much